Okay. Who is this? This guy. It's Drainbow. <laughs> That's like a rainbow, but it's been drained of all the color. It's just a Drainbow. Comment down below, Drainbow guy. Huh. What's his name? Uh, his name is Nicholas Sarcophagus. We got another one-man band here. I'm impressed by one-man band because it takes dedication. It, and it's the way to go because you don't have to deal with these fucking assholes like being, trying to be creative and stuff. It's like you are the master of all the creativity. You want to bring up a picture? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so we, we got um, we got a one-man band here okay. out of Austin, yeah. Texas. That is a big picture. Hey, Sorry about that, Mr. Sarcophagus. Hey, he looks like Matt. This doesn't look just like Matt. A little bit. That's exactly like Matt. You look like our friend. Exactly um, like Matt. And he's apparently <laughs> been, is Matt. been doing, <laughs> is Matt. doing this since 2007. Um, yeah. And here we are to talk about his album, The Tower of Flints. Let's take a look at that. It's a good picture, I should say. It's a good picture. <laughs> he's on your dating profile. It's good. Uh, here's his logo. See? Just D. Simple. Just D. Simple. Simple. Okay. We got a picture. All right. Okay. Tower Flint's debut album released independently, direct from the bedroom. What and uh, what the fuck is this? Did, <laughs> he recorded this in his bedroom. I'm I can't confirm that. I don't know, but it, it sounds better than a bedroom. This is a definitely a DIY uh, thing. DIY. So a DIY, a DIY. Um, Unfunny metal jokes. archives uh, tags this as progressive metal. Um. I guess that seems appropriate, but that's not even. We can't even say that this is true progressive metal because this is just off the wall. Um, it's a mash of several styles, not a blend, a mash, a juxtaposition of a lot of stuff going on. We've got like some very mean, chunky riffs that are like just abutted with crazy ass cascading synths that just like jolt you out of your slumber. A mix of vocal styles as well. We've got like a melodic queer vocal. Uh, we've got a black metal vocal. We've got a death metal vocal. I imagine all these vocal styles are fighting it's each other. It's a few albums recorded together at the same time. What? It's like a. It's like it's like he. It's like he took a bunch of. I think maybe he recorded like different albums and he just tracked them over each other. That's what he did. That would be very it experimental. To me. It just came to me right now. I'm like, um, that's what he fucking. We've even got some uh, fusion. Comment down below. We've even got some fusion elements, I would say, on this. We're kind of fusion to what? Fusion. fusion. Like jazz fusion. Yeah, but yeah, fusion to like what? Like just jazz. Fusion. Fusing to jazz. Fusion. Fusing to jazz. Jazz fusion music. Yeah. Like Billy Sheehan or something. Oh, yeah. You're not a Scientologist, though, this guy. We don't know. You're not. No, you're not. Right? You're not. You're not, right? But check out track Lair of the Night Gaunt to see what I'm talking about. Do not know what a night gaunt is. And he's even he's breaking out some funky bass even on a uh, song it's like, fourth it's rider. Like bam, bam. There's a little bam. There's a little bam there. Listen, listen, um, um, uh, Nicholas Sarcophagus. No one's done that since the 1990s. Bam, bam, bam. I mean, he doesn't go full on slapping, but it's a little funky. It's yeah, he's a little getting there with funky. the funkiness. Um. So yeah, this this album is like I would call it like a death metal guitarist fighting a black metal vocalist with a guy plaintively. Yell singing poetry in the middle, like with a synthesizer. But it's all one guy. There was nothing. And it's all one dude. I think he there's like separate personalities in his head, which is fine because he's able to control them. He's able to control them, make them work together beautifully. Am I right or am I right? Beautifully, I don't know because I would call this a very jaunty, jerky he thinks, experience. He thinks he th listen. I think he was not. And as like, as, as soon as you like kind of get in the groove of one style, you are going somewhere else right away. It's not you know it's it's. It's um complicated. It's complicated. But All no, right. but we want to give you a review, Mr. Nicolaus Sarcophagus, because, you know, you know, Samantha told me about your thing, you know, you know, and uh, I was like, Wow, one man album. We have to give this guy some credit. We have to we talk about we this. We love guy. one man bands. Yeah, I love uh, one man bands because I am a technically a one man band. I have never made anything. I have no choice but to be a one man band. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Very few people want to work with me. Including me. Yeah. Nobody wants to All work right. with me. Okay, what do we got here? So, um, this falls on our scale. Um, in uh, on the left, not one doesn't mean low. It means on the left. It, it's it's on that side of the when this scale. Um, this album is a complete cacophony of sonic terror. Okay, that's not even none of that means a bad thing. I believe that's what you were looking for. I don't think you were looking for harmonic beauty. 
harmon 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 what's the word i'm looking for harmonic 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 beauty i don't think you were looking for that if, if you were that's strange okay but um yeah this album rejects all musical theory that i understand i'm not you know that smart in music um it shows a great disregard for the inhibitions um of standards of the confines of keys I'm talking like your music teacher and being like, your music is absolute garbage. No, I don't, I don't mean that. No, I mean, it, it is just completely disregarding any like mathematical rules of music that, that I've grown up with, that I've always understood. I mean, it's very free form. The, the chord structure is like this chord and that chord. And this Like the chords don't, like they're not chords that want to be with each other. But I think he did that. He obviously Typically. did that on purpose. You know, and there's no oh. technically typical in music. There's a lot of experimental music that people like very much that's been very popular you know that might be you know similar to the lines of what this guy's doing um you know so it's not like you know impossible that people won't like your music it's you know it's a bit much for me as far as like how listenable this album is you know for me i feel like this album both likes and does not like you like it as i said jerks you around a lot but then it gets you you it, the individual segments are approachable and nice and you'll get into them so it's like it's kind of like taking things in you know this album doesn't like you i don't like you either but it likes you as well it's it's conflicted well the album's schizophrenic it's a complete assault i wanted to mention this also has an 11 minute song on it yes as we've discussed earlier this episode i don't, I don't like when people do that it's called uh calipigian hunger i looked up calipigian that, that means the state of having a beautiful butt so mr sarcophagus that was very crude <laughs> You know, fine. He has he has weird you know he has weird um, he has weird combinations of words <laughs> that aren't expected to go together. All Just right, like the music. I I thought that this piece this is more of a piece. It's got several movements Movement. swinging, it, it, swinging wildly through everything yes. that we've experienced when, thus far. When music has movements, I'm a little like um, cautious when music has movements. But. This one in particular, I almost felt like it had some demented 90s nostalgia going on. It sounded almost like Nine Inch Nails or something. Yeah, maybe it's inspired by Nine Inch Nails. Of know. course, then going into like complete sonic terror, yeah. progressive black metal weirdness. There's even like hardcore vocals on that one. Yeah. I, guess. That was a <laughs> I think he's trying to like combine every, it's like every genre together. It's just kind of like throwing that most was, of the genres together. That was the album closer, so very good. Just... Um, but surprise again, my final note is surprisingly listenable on this, <laughs> despite everything we've said. Yeah. Like I find, I I don't really like progressive metal, but uh. Depend, you know, there's different kinds of you know, there's a classic. That's a very vague. There's term. that in this a classic sense, you know. There's the dream theater, and there's like the stuff like the, the you know, um, you know, stuff like that. There's a uh, that kind of pro prog metal, and there's like the newer All stuff, right. you know. So fate's warning stuff like that. As far as the production uh, values on this, um, I'm under the impression this is a very DIY. Did a good job for it though. And it sounds very good for DIY. For your for your room for your bedroom. I don't know if it's his bedroom. We don't know. <laughs> well, you know he We're sound proofed it really well. And uh, if he did it in his bedroom, I think I, I have the, I think the drums are fake. Comment down below, uh, Mr. Sarcophagus, the drums. You know I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Um, and your drums are very in the back. I don't, did you do that on purpose? Like, did you want the drums in the back line on purpose? You not want them to be dominant, you know, because you know, because they're probably fake. So maybe they're not really. You know, the drums aren't the focus of this. So uh, yeah, they just seem like they're in the background to me. Like they're really kind of muted. So yeah, comment down below with the, you know, with why that was your choice. Not that it's a bad thing. But again, good high end of DIY recording. Yeah, I would say. yeah, for good like, production for your bedroom. It's um, maybe the studio is his bed. Maybe he lives and sleeps. In a studio. I think there might be a note on the band camp of where it was recorded. He lives in Abbey Road. Oh. Yeah, he's like, he I lives live. in Austin, <laughs> Texas. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, there's a lot of studios there, so maybe he lives in one. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Uh, so, um, too many notes for his camp play? There are too many notes. There <laughs> are. It's the first time I heard you. I'm like, there are too many notes. And you know what that means. I know you know what that means. I'm, I'm glad you know what that means. Um... But however, you know, Nick is, is 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 skilled in all of these notes, in all of these things that he's playing, whether it's the keyboard, the guitar, the bass, um, or the fake drums. 
uh, yeah, you know, you know, his, his vocals singing, all of the above. Like his playing is very skilled, and it's not half-assed at all. You know, is he a better musician than the Ice Core guy? Yeah, he, he probably is. Um, mm-hmm. you know, the hell is that? Um, yeah. So like, yeah, the the other guy's good at his instruments. So yeah, I like the guitar solos. They kind of get groovy. Yeah, no, they're actually good guitar it's solos. Groovy as parts of these out. So they're not like bullshit guitar solos. They're you know they're they're. Uh, uh, yeah, everything he's doing is good. Yeah, he's got some very decent riffs, like literally hiding um, on this album. Nicholas Strakovic, I would like you to make like a regular sounding album with your skills. That would be a total betrayal of everything he is. Have you has is, 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 is there any other albums from Nicholas? Uh, he has Sarkovic? a couple EPs. You were just looking at them. Oh, did we listen to them? Uh, no. Well, let's listen to them. All right. After this, but we have. We have. We're sorry, we haven't listened to your older stuff. As I said, there's uh, some very good riffs on this thing. Uh, the only my only complaint here is if you're enjoying that riff, don't get it too attached because it's gonna take it away. Yeah, and or annihilate it or distort it. That's a thing some of these people do. It's like in uh, Ghostbusters Two when Egon says, "Let's see what happens when we take the puppy away." And Egon did that because he was like happy, like because Dana kissed him and he was like, hey, "Why don't we take?" He's like sadistic. He's like, hey, "Let's take the puppy away." Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, this guy, you know, you obviously grew up with a broken slinky. You know, your, your parents didn't believe in toys. All right, more 80s films references. I love, we love Ghostbusters 2. And the people don't like Ghostbusters 2. They think only Ghostbusters 1 is good. I know people that think neither are good and they're assholes. Um, but I love Ooh. Vigo. Uh, Rich thinks Ghostbusters oh, is well, not fuck good him. at all. He thinks all right. Spaceball is not good at all. Like, did you have a childhood? Something's wrong with that man. Yeah, something's wrong with you. All right, moving on. Um, is this a fun or a serious album? It's all of the above. The answer to that question is yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. There's the yes meme. Uh, there it is. The album opens with like a nervous laugh, which devolves. It's from like a horror movie or something. It, what is that from, guy? Know. Comment down below. And it devolves into maniacal cackling, which seems very appropriate. Is that like from The Exorcist or something? Or that sounds. I like, couldn't tell like you. Like a horror movie or something. Lyrically, I don't know what we're talking about. There seems to be some kind of animal theme. It's a very uncomfortable place. Um, well, how do you? So how it's do you? It's a very frightening place. I'm speaking out to you, Nicolau Um How do you come up with these these, these thoughts? Because you're you know you, you strike me as a guy with a lot of issues. Not many, not many of those issues could be bad. This sound um, actually, for for you know for who would like it, it transcends all ages. This music, what you did here, has nothing to do with someone's like. Um, in, ingrained musical taste like what they're you know what they're going to be open minded to or what they're not you either get this or you don't like from day one it doesn't matter if you're young or old like this you know what you're doing doesn't you know time is not a factor age is not a factor in what you're making here this is outside the concept of time yeah. it's outside the concept of scenes yeah he's just, not in a scene yeah it's not doesn't mean anything but he's not out of a scene either you've transcended oh. it's not <laughs> um but yeah, I want you to, you know. Um, All right. Speaking of this art, th- I think this is representative of a lot of things that are going on in the album, a lot of imagery here. That's accurate. Yeah, that, that's accurate. That I only noticed now because it's large, but uh-huh. that owl's crying blood. Yeah. So a lot like a lot of people's albums, like they'll have something on the cover that has nothing to do. I mean, that's the death owl. Yeah, I think it's death owl. Yeah. So like, you know, it has, it's like, oh, I remember that from the song. So that's cool that, you know, you drew what, I mean, did you draw this? No, he didn't. Oh, okay. The um, credits on the band camp. Okay. So cool. So, so whoever drew this, or, you know representative i'm sure you had the concept of this um you explained this to the artist but yeah um uh nicolaus sarcophagus um yeah comment <laughs> nicolaus sarcophagus um yeah you know um uh, interact with us and don't call me soft and don't say i live in my mom's basement um and and don't say i'm a leftist cuck like our other commenters um and you know and if you're going to defend michael graves do it do it with some, some right. class. Okay. Um, you know. Drainbow, Tower of Flints. Check it out. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk more to you. So interact with us. Don't All hide right. from us. I know everyone hates us, but you're not going to. You understand us. 